Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study. In this series of Bible studies, we'll be taking a closer look at the Bible's evidence for the completion of the prolonged Judgment Day and the end of the world occurring in the year 2033. And now here's your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study that is examining the biblical evidence for the end of the world in the year 2033. And this is study number 99. First Peter 4, verse 17 declares, judgment begins at the house of God. And, and, uh, and then the Lord smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. This is what has happened in the congregations with, with their uh, losing sight of the truth. They have gone far afield. They, they worship, um, you know, practically everything under the sun, except the true God of the Bible, except the Lord Jesus Christ. They've added to the word uh, terribly. They subtracted from the word in some cases terribly. They, uh, they, they do not know truth itself because God has blinded them. And another way of saying this, this um, blindness that the men who were trying to find the door are struck with is found in 2 Thessalonians 2. And this is in the context of the man of sin, son of perdition, who is Satan. It's another name. Again, Satan. God applies many names to him. And he takes his seat in the temple, showing himself he is God. That's Satan upon his loosing from that bottomless pit. Kills the two witnesses, as Revelation 11, 7 revealed. Then he takes over. He begins to rule in the church showing himself he is God in the people of the church because they don't have spiritual life. They, they have no understanding that they're no longer worshiping Christ, that Christ has departed, the Spirit of God has left, and uh, you have the Bible, but, but the two witnesses are dead, so there's no power, no uh, source of strength behind the Word because that uh, the Spirit himself powered the Word, and, and, and so the church um, is deceived and continues to operate, yet now more and more lies uh, have entered into their gospels, into their doctrines, in, into everything they do. The, the uh, church has been remade in the image of Satan. Revelation 13 lays this out. Um, might as well turn there before we come back here to 2 Thessalonians 2. Revelation 13, we, we find the beast once again who rises from the sea in verse 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And that's equivalent to um, Revelation 11 verse 7, rising out of the bottomless pit. The word bottomless pit, the Greek word abysso, is translated as deep uh, twice in the New Testament. And, and the deep would be like a sea. And, and so he's rising up. He comes against the camp of the saints. In um, verse 7, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Read these things. Go to Revelation 20, verses 7 through 9. Satan comes he, he's loosed out of his pit and immediately goes against the camp of the saints. Who are the camp of the saints? You tell me. You tell me. Uh, uh, you know, don't, don't uh, think of the saints as just some canonized um, individuals that one church uh, thinks they can make holy in a saint. No. The word saint is the word holy. The holy ones are those made holy through salvation, through the cleansing away, washing away of their sin in salvation, 
all God's people are saints who are truly born again, truly forgiven their sins, truly washed uh, from all iniquity. But the the um, the language of saints would apply to the church because everyone who says they're a Christian is making that claim, basically. I've been cleansed from my sin. Yet, um, the you know, the, the saints are, are in the church at that time, but most of them are not truly saved, not true saints, not true saints, but yet it is the camp of the saints, and Satan comes against it and wins. Notice, it's given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. What overcomes the world? Our faith. You see, to overcome means to be victorious. Satan wins because God is using him as an instrument of judgment the, against an unfaithful church, corporate body. And, and so he wins. And then in this passage we read, in images made to the beast. And everyone must worship the image of the beast or, or they'll be killed. And, and you see, this ties in with the lying gospels that are within all churches of the world, the whole corporate church. The very existence of the church at this point in history is a lie because God has ended the church. God began the church. He's in control of, um, of everything related to the church. He began it. He was in the midst of it. He continued it and protected it during the church age, and he has every right to end it, which he has done. He ended it. He caused the pastors to cease from feeding the flock. We're told in Ezekiel 34 that they have no more authority from God, no more commission to teach or to preach or to have spiritual authority over the congregation. It's all been rescinded, all taken away. So their operation, their continued existence as a church is outright rebellion against God and his commandments, his word, the Bible. And, and so everything about the church was remade, not in Christ's image, which is the truth, but in Satan's image, which is the lie. Lying doctrine, lying gospels, lying existence, the fact that they still are operating. And, and, and so we read in 2 Thessalonians 2, going back there, where uh, God is speaking of the time of the end of the church age, and we read in verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them, that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's coming from God. God, not Satan. God's behind it. And, and he's, he's sending it to those who have no love of the truth. Christ is the truth. The Word is the truth. They have no love of the Bible. And that's the only explanation for what the churches and congregations of the world have done to this holy book by trampling it underfoot again and again. And, and in, in uh, their councils and in, in their, the doctrine they put forth to the congregation. Um, and, and now it's just gone way uh, crazy, and, and they've gone mad in their blindness uh, with the things that they're doing, the things they're teaching, the things they're, they're saying the Bible is teaching, that uh, that's why God has sent them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. He's judged them, and in his judgment, he's turned them over, delivered them up into the hands of Satan, who was permitted by God. Who do you think loosed him? It was Christ who came down from heaven who loosed him because Christ has the, the, the keys to hell and to death and the bottomless pit was hell. 
And Christ loosed him, knowing full well what he would do. He would come immediately against the churches. And so he did, and he entered in, and, and there was no um, protection because the Spirit of Christ left. God abandoned the church. Uh, he, he had warned the church for centuries that, that they had to repent, and they did not repent. And so finally, in you know, the, the churches in their high-mindedness, their pride, they, they thought, well, God will never judge us. Oh, no, we, we stand by grace. By grace, we stand. And, and you know, we admit we're not perfect. We, we have doctrinal sins, of course. Our church is imperfect. But thank God for grace. Well, that's wonderful if you're an individual, because when God says, for by grace are ye saved, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, else any man should boast, he's talking about an individual. He's talking about the individual elect sinner that became saved through the grace of God as God forgave all sin as Christ paid for those sins. Churches, the, the, the um, institution of the church, the, the various denominations, the individual church even, doesn't stand by grace. If that were the case, why do churches fall away? Why, why, even over the course of the church age, did Satan um, overcome various churches, various denominations? Why, you know, the reason for the Reformation, why so many Protestants or protesters left the Catholic Church, it become another gospel. And when something becomes another gospel, it becomes a lie. And... And Satan is the father of lies. Satan is the one that has overcome that church or that denomination. And, and, and you see, uh, it, none of them stood by grace. Every church has always been, and the whole corporate body, the whole church institution has always stood in a works relationship towards God and his word. God told them, be faithful, be faithful, and, and um, you'll continue to exist, and, and I'll continue to bless. But when the church was not faithful, then God gave space to repent. Revelation 2, in an address to the church of Thyatira, verses 20 through 22, they suffered Jezebel to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication and idolatry, and then we read, God gave space to repent, but they did not repent. So he will cast them into a bed of great tribulation. Great tribulation is when judgment begins at the house of God. And that's already occurred. The space to repent was the church age, 33 AD to 1988. The church age has been over for decades. And and, and God's wrath has been upon them. He turned them over to the devil. Yes, that's what the Bible teaches. God turned them over. God sent them strong delusion that they should believe a lie and, and think that they're still the people of God, that God's still blessing them, that God is still in their midst. And every Sunday, when the pastor climbs into the pulpit and the congregation is lifting up their prayer, there's no God present because God left and they're not offering worship to God and they haven't been for a long time. The man of sin took his seat in the temple. And, and so God says they had no love of the truth. Very well, no love of the truth, but which would imply they, they preferred the lie. They loved the lie because in heart, they are their father, the devil. The same thing Jesus said to the Jews is true of those professed Christians never changed in heart. And what's the nature of a man's heart uh, when left to himself in his sin? Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. A deceitful heart is a lying heart. 
preference for the lie. No love of the truth. No love of the truth sounds like an odd, strange thing to them. No, they, they uh, much like the world itself, give preference to that which is false and a lie. Well, uh, uh, here again in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They believe not the truth. And, and by the way, that they should believe a lie. Look at verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, dreams, tongues, visions, falling over backwards, holy laughter, you name it. If it's, if, um, um, somebody thinks there's some kind of supernatural activity occurring, they flock after it, not realizing that is the operation, the working of Satan. He's trying to show that he is God. Once God finished the Bible, that was it. The, the true gospel is a book. It's limited to the book, Genesis through Revelation and everything therein. It is anything outside the book. Anyone who adds Revelation 22, 18, and 19 or subtracts from this book. And when somebody says, oh, I had a dream. God gave me a wonderful dream last night. Wonderful dream. And, uh, well, what did he say? Everybody is so curious and interested. Uh, they they want to learn. Uh, maybe this is something that will, uh, God's given us an additional word that's adding to the word of God. Or thinking that when I receive a, a, a tongue, I'm going to speak in tongues, and it's from God. And and uh, whether one interprets or not, it doesn't matter. They are claiming God is giving additional divine revelation. It ought to be added to the Bible if they were consistent, but whether they add it or not, they, uh, of course, they should not. They are engaging in a violation of Revelation 22, 18, and 19. And, and the Lord says there, if you add to the word, I'll add to you the plagues written herein. And this is the the pitiful, pitiful condition of the churches and congregations of the world. It's why Lot alone was at the gate of Sodom at the time of Sodom's end. The, the, he was the only one watching because only the elect are true watchmen. None of the Sodomites, none of the people of the city were watching, just like the church today gives complete lip service to that whole idea, uh, as Jesus said, watch ye therefore. Uh, um, and and he, he repeated it many times concerning his coming, watch. And, and the church says, oh, we watch, we watch. And then when anyone, anyone says, oh, you know, uh, biblical evidence. Biblical evidence is a good example. Biblical evidence for 2033, and fingers go into ears, blindfolds go on, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the indoctrination of the mantra, no man knows, uh, flows quickly out of their mouth. Don't want to know a thing. Don't want to check it out and be a Berean. Oh, no, no, no. No, you, you, um, you know, it's as though it's the unpardonable sin, and, and it's not. It's not. What it is is blindness, it's deafness, it's spiritual deadness of a dead church. They, they have been bundled as tares for the burning, and, and God has ended with them. And, and uh, you know, this is tragic it is. It, it's very tragic information and grievous, but we're li living in tragic and grievous times for the church um, to begin with, and now the whole world. And now the whole world is in a similar situation. 
as God first shut the door on those in Sodom, those in the churches, no salvation within the congregation since the end of the church age way back in 1988. And, and, and yet the Lord saved the great multitude outside, but only up until May 21, 2011, when he shut the door on the world. A similar activity or, or a similar judgment um, uh, poured out on the unsaved inhabitants of the earth. So yes, very grievous times. No good news as far as these things are concerned for the ungodly. It's not uh, good news to, to hear that it's the day of the wrath of God and he has completed and ended his salvation program. The, the good news is only for those few that the Lord has called the elect and chosen. Uh, they have the good news of knowing we are there, right ahead, a little further, comes the end of all things concerning this world and the beginning, the beginning of joy and, and eternal bliss forevermore with the new heaven and new earth being brought in completely and we receiving our new resurrected bodies to live in that new creation forevermore. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.